We have reached the end of year six in the Oakland A's franchise, and today it's our first offseason in quite some time. We're coming off an unbelievable year, and one that was so rewarding and fun, and it's just so bittersweet for it to be over, because we were so close to actually going to the World Series. This felt like a year where maybe our team was a little ahead of schedule, but when you have breakouts from guys like Aaron Don and Joe Michael and big additions like Jawan Duran, you can have seasons like we just did. It shows that the building we've done over the first six years has all been in the right direction. But now it is the challenge of trying to put this team together for continued success. And I think that there's going to be a lot of challenges in this offseason, primarily with our team budget. We're going to have a couple key free agents this year, and I think we're going to struggle to keep a few players around unless we make some difficult decisions. At the same time, you have to factor in that we have some players coming up who have yet to ever have their chance. So how do you manage trying to keep a window open bringing in players who have absolutely no experience. You know, it's not quite like in the NFL when you make a first round pick. Like everybody's got, you know, first round picks coming in and they might take over big roles, small roles, whatever. I feel more uneasy doing that in the baseball world. But nonetheless, I'm excited to get into today's episode and get us ready for year seven. We spent a lot of time in year six in real life, like two months to go through that season. I know we've got to pick up the pace as we get into year seven and beyond if we want to reach uh, a proper end of this series before, uh, you know, MLB 24, I guess. But I, uh, I'm just really enjoying the ride. I appreciate all the support, everybody. And I am ready to get this team hopefully in line to repeat their success going into next season. We lose in six games to the Tampa Bay Rays and the ALCS. We put up a really good fight, but they were the better team. And ultimately, they win the World Series, defeating the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, maybe we were the third best team this year. That's uh, a pretty good leap compared to where we were at the beginning of this series. Not seeing anything huge here in terms of retirements. I guess Chris Bryant's a big name. You got uh, Blake Snell retiring. Nobody, though, from Oakland. We're not that old. No staff changes this year, but a lot of coaches are now entering a contract year. And then for exclusive free agent negotiations, two big names here in Joan Duran and Fran Mil Reyes. Uh, Domingo Acevedo obviously had a great run for a while in this series, but we're now, you know, looking to move on. We're not going to sign him. However, Duran and Reyes, those guys played huge roles for us this year. Duran played for about $7 million. And now if you want to sign him to a one-year deal, it's going to be 13.3. That is huge for a reliever. And I just don't know how easy that's going to be to handle or what it would cost us to make it work. Fran Mil Reyes played for $4 million last season. And now a one-year deal would be about 5.9. And I, I feel like I definitely want to bring him back. I mean, he hit 30 home runs, 282, had a 490 slugging, and was one of our better players in the postseason. What I tried to think about going into today's recording is where could we afford to not have to spend more money? And I'm looking at our starting pitching. We've already invested a lot into Logan Gilbert, and we know Joe Michael is a Cy Young Award winning ace. So I'm really looking at, you know, if Soroka opts out of his deal, which I don't know if he just accepted his option or what the situation is when that deadline comes up, but... I want to see two guys, Cole Phillips next year in the rotation, and I'm also interested in Cam Cope. I'm not going to be active in the starting pitcher market. I'm going to trust that we have added the players to fill that so our money can go into our offense and some other spots. I'd rather spend on bullpen than starting pitching. And I think we found out in the postseason, the bullpen still has a ways to go. And Gregorio Uribe, 
he really wasn't ready for prime time. I don't think he pitched all that well in the postseason. I don't think his control was there. And hopefully uh, with another year under his belt, he's ready. But we kind of rushed him along this year because our bullpen wasn't great. But he did not prove to be the answer we needed. We also had two guys who were in the bullpen for a while that just kind of struggled last year and got sent down. You got Marshall Lerma, whose surface numbers might not be, you know, as bad, but a 172 whip is pretty disastrous. And he doesn't strike guys out. So he's walking too many guys, balls in play, he just wasn't sharp. And then there was also Landon Sims, who I thought we'd be able to count on for a while, but the guy gave up seven homers in 30 innings and played himself down the AAA. So I'd obviously love to bring back Joan Duran. He was phenomenal, and it's just such a, a valuable thing to have when you have a closer as good as he is. So where we're going to start here is with Fran Mil Reyes. And I want to offer that $59 million deal he's looking for. Or the $5.9 million deal he is looking for. I don't know if I could take this down at all. But, uh, oh, I guess I have to make a better offer probably. When's the deadline on this now? Five-day period? Okay, it's not long. And I think when you look at the shape of our bullpen right now, like if we don't have Duran, it might just be a bad bullpen. And we're going to have to spend money to fix it. So I might just be better off offering what he wants. The issue, though, is he doesn't view us as a contender. Dude, we were just two games away from going to the World Series. And that motivation is actually a really big deal because I'd have to offer significantly more. Are you kidding me? 13.3? That's not even opening the door, it looks like. Uh-oh. I can't be offering $17 million here to a closer, can I? To get down here in the green, we got to go to like $16 million. That's huge. At the very least, I'm not sure I can really do a big offer until the open market when I've done all my arbitration deals and everything else and I can see how much money we actually have. I can't offer $17 million in this stage. No way. Soroka has declined his contract option. This is what we expected now for multiple years. So he is suddenly a free agent as well. And my thought was that if he opts out, we are going to move on. He wants about $15 million a year, which I, I think is very fair money. And he's a very good pitcher. But I do think that it's about time to see what we have in guys like Cam Cope and Cole Phillips. And to me... Cope was always that guy who would fill in for Soroka, plays the same style that he does. Not an overpowering guy, keep it in the ballpark, just go get your outs, not going to do it flashy or anything. This year, I want to see Cope in the, in the rotation. And I know we're going to have a, a, a healthy arbitration salary coming up here for Kenny Waldachuk as well. So I think you'd be looking at Michael Gilbert Waldachuk. And then the two young guns here to try and solidify the rotation. We'll see what the numbers are, though, once we get to the offseason, if things can work. There are a couple players, I think, that we can look at moving to save a little money. A couple smaller moves, but ultimately right now, unless he's, like, super interested in our team, and I guess the outlook isn't that we're a contender going into next year. So our team's success of this year is not uh, convincing the market, I guess, for whatever reason. And also, he wants to be an ace. I can't promise that. Aaron Ashby has exercised his option. He'll be making $7.5 million. I forgot he had an option, but I expected him to be on the team, so nothing changes there. I'm just going to offer Reyes what he wants here, offer him a star part of this lineup as well. And Hernandez now declines an option. So there were a few options here that I forgot about. Jonathan Hernandez is now available. And uh, he's been very hit or miss in this series. He's a player that I don't want to give a huge contract to. And at 4.8, that doesn't seem to be good enough. I think we're going to let him hit free agency. For our relievers down at AAA, we'd have to bring back Landon Sims. Griggs, I think, is pretty solid in a certain role. He's a lefty specialist right now. 
Uh, Palante was not good after acquiring him, but we might have to just run it back and see how he does. We do have Doug Romero, Jackie Seacrest. Like, this bullpen, ooh, it could go in a lot of different directions, guys. I'd like to have Hernandez back, but if you're talking I have to go to $6 million to make this easy, I got to see the market, man. Still have not seen Fran Mil Reyes accept his deal. He might just test free agency then. And I believe we have hit free agency. All right, stage one. So I've got to go through arbitration and tenders and see what do we even have. We're also adding Cam Cope immediately to our 40-man roster. This is one of those moves where we're going to try to save a little money here. Daryl Air Nyes. I like him. Good defender. But I think that we have other infielders that are going to fight for playing time. And he's never been much of a hitter for us. To bring him back, it would be, you know, $1.8 million or so. I think we need that money opened up. Especially if a guy like Max Muncy, who's a better all-around player, won't even command that same salary. To me, Robert Poisson, he's a very similar defender to Air Nyes, but offers more offensive upside after stepping up a little bit last year. So arbitration is where things can start to get a little interesting, especially with guys actually closer to free agency. Michael is not there yet, but now looking at about three and a half million dollars this year. Again, if you want that multi-year options, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be up there. So we're still going just one year at a time here with our star. And also this might be a spot where, uh, might be able to save a little money if I'm more careful when it comes to my arbitration offers and everything. If you're not familiar with how arbitration works, it's kind of a weird system where basically we're going to have a number in mind and then the player is going to have a number in mind and it goes to like a, a neutral third party who determines which offer is more fair for the player. I actually can't believe that still exists. And it's available for players who have more than three years experience, but less than six years Major League experience. I think I'm still going to offer the three and a half here to Joe. I just have no idea if it's possible, if this went to arbitration, if he could want like a huge number of some sort. Not like 20 million, but like, I don't know if arbitration here could really go sideways on us. So I'm going to play this one a little safer. So I offered him three million in arbitration or three and a half just as a regular old contract. Aaron Don, he would like 2.8. Miguel Vargas, this is one that I think could get a little weird. 4.9 is his salary demand. Arbitration, he was already making 3.8. He also wants to be a star and... I mean, against lefties, he for sure can hit high in the order and everything, but I'm not sure if I should promise that or every day or if it even really matters all that much. But he was really good last year. Ken Waldachuk. All right, looking at about $5 million to bring him back this year. And then Trey Sweeney is getting closer to $2 million. Here's a tricky one. Zach Geloff at 2.6. If we sign him to that, I think you have to consider the possibilities of trading him. I'm not going to let him just go, but uh, I would be interested in possibly moving him. And I think we could probably get him back for less if we only offer arbitration because he's not coming off a good year or anything. So I can't see him out arguing us. I'm going to do the same thing here with Gunnar Hoagland, because I don't think he had the tremendous season last year or anything. Three million to Susak for a bench catcher. I'm probably going to try to win some arbitration hearings here. Josh Baez at three million dollars. Ah, oh, Baez, man, this has not worked. And I'm basically done with him. Maybe there's a little trade value or something. I don't know. I think I'm going to let him go. Because he hasn't even showed the upside of a guy like Geloff before. And I don't want that money tied up right now. I need that money available. 
Because we'd go to arbitration probably and have to wait till December. I need that money like this week. And I guess I can offer some of this later. Like I'm just doing this all right away to try and uh, get the number of what I actually have to spend right now. But not every decision is going to be made like directly right now. Arbitration there. Samad Taylor. 2.2. Yeah, that's a big number. I don't think I'm going to offer it right now. And for Andre Palante, uh, I'll offer... Uh, I don't know, actually, because he, he had pretty good numbers last year. So I don't know if I want to go to arbitration. So I got a few players here I haven't offered to yet. Palante, Taylor, and a few others haven't even gotten arbitration deals yet. And that's going to leave us with around like $30 million. If you look at just the pending offers and our available budget. So we have a little money. And there is Ronald Acuna Jr. available. Oh my. What would it take? 35 a year. Okay, we're out of that one. I want Duran back. There's Gunnar Henderson. There's Francisco Alvarez. This is one heck of a class. We're watching the D build of the Atlanta Braves, possibly. You're Don Alvarez. Someone get him out of Houston. Ellie De La Cruz. This is a great free agent class. I'm not used to this. So what if we start here looking at bullpen options? Penn Murphy's available. He was the closer the last two years. For the Mariners, and he's had a stretch now of three really high-level years. And we could pry him away from a division rival, possibly. It's going to take 8.6? Oh, I don't know. I want to bring back Duran. Like, I'm already accepting we might not have a great middle relief, but if we can have a really good first guy out like we did last year, and Aaron Ashby, and a good closer... I feel like we can develop the rest and have a whole year to do it now. And plus guys who could be traded and, you know, we can always make acquisitions. But if I don't get Duran, then what do I do? Duran and Ashby give us room for error with our middle relief. I'm offering $15.8 million now to Joan Duran. And I'll offer a contract as well to Jonathan Hernandez because I was already hoping he'd be coming back anyway. Not sure 5.1 gets it done. And we can't forget as well, we still have Fran Mil Reyes who is unsigned. But we have offered the contract, so it's just kind of on him now. Well, that's just sad. Buxton down to 80 speed, regressing at age 35. I don't like seeing this. Not one bit. So now as I look at our pending offers and the money we have set aside there, I actually wonder if we could have the money for a move. Maybe it's not as dire as I thought. Like, the, the ideal move would be like the familiarity of a Soroka to bring him back for a year, but he wants to be an ace somewhere, and we might have a hard time convincing him to come here unless we offer like 17 million. And even then... Like, he wants that ace roll. So I, I think that it's harder for us to convince him. Kodai Senga. He's available, but the last four years, he's allowing an awful lot of runs and a lot via the long ball. So I don't think I'd offer a deal to him. I wonder if one reliever worth giving an offer to could be Joe Barlow, who's put together... Um, some pretty good years over the past four years. The whips have all been pretty low there. Hasn't had like a lot of strikeouts or anything, but you know, just a, a middle reliever, nothing flashy. That's what we need. Just guys who can go get a few outs. And I'd like to offer him a one year contract that will top the Cubs offer. So we do still have a little bit of space here. Like there is the possibility of offering Soroka that return deal after all. Just seeing if he would take it. I'm going to put out like a $16.6 million offer for him and just see where that could go. Joan Duran is no longer interested in the athletics offer. 
Jordan Holloway signs a three-year deal with the White Sox. That is not bad. Three years, 12.3? Well, his ERA was five and a half, so maybe it's not a great deal. Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to Cleveland. $338 million. Welcome to the American League. Spencer Strider to the Twins. Nine years, $256 million. What are the Braves going to do now? No! Joan Duran. Nine years, 107.1. Here I was thinking we could get him back on a one-year deal. How foolish of me. It was a lot of fun while it lasted. But holy cow, I have a lot of work to do now with this bullpen. Nine years, 107. I was never getting there. I guess we have some money available now. What do I do now with this money? Is there a move that makes some sense? The main thing is we still need pitching. So... We got Josh Hader, Jordan Romano. Some guys are available. Hader's in regression. 31 saves, 6 blown last year. He's been declining and... I don't know if I'm interested. Jordan Romano. Obviously, he's declined if he's only an 81. His ERAs are a little more stable, but it looks like he's not been used as a closer for a couple years. And his numbers, I can stomach a little bit better. His walk rate isn't as high as haters. His strikeout rate isn't as high either. And the, the salary demand looks a lot more reasonable. I think I'm in here on Jordan Romano. I'd offer a two-year deal even to... Uh... Yeah, he likes the two-year deal a lot more. And I could also offer possibly a closing role. Man, I can't believe Duran... Well, I can. That's a big money. I just can't believe this, dude. I think I have to pay a little more attention here to some of these premium middle relief options suddenly, like Marinaccio coming off the season that he had here. Strikeout rates can be a little bit higher on him. I am in on Marinaccio. Let's go. I'm going to offer seven here. That tops New York. Leaves us with around like 10 million in space. And then for all the offers I have out there, there's not a great deal of competition right now. Joe Barlow has accepted the Cubs offer. So we just lost on him. MJ Melendez going to the Tampa Bay Rays, the World Series champions. So another option off the board. Marinaccio, the Twins want more relief. I think I have to increase my offer here on Jordan Romano. I'm going to have to go up, I think, to like 11.8. And then Reyes, I'm going to bump this up to one year. He wants 6.2. How do we end up here again? Star. I really wish they'd view us as a contender. Like, do you not realize what we did last year? You were on the team. I'm going to 7.5 on Marinaccio. George Kirby is leaving the Mariners as they lose another one of their starting pitchers. Now the, the Braves have an addition this year. So Kirby replaces Spencer Strider. Josh Hader ended up getting a three-year deal with the Nationals at $17 million. So it was factoring in the fact that his numbers haven't been all that great, it looks like. And I don't think that we've added anybody quite yet. All of our stuff here is just our uh, regular old uh, tender contracts and whatnot. And here come the Mariners offering to Soroka. Wow, what a move that would be. They get Soroka, we get Logan Gilbert. We're out there. I can't compete with that. So I'm back to having some money available again. Marinaccio, he's going to take a multi-year if I don't bump it up. So he's got really good pitching clutch, and in addition, he has this performs better when the team is behind. So I'm going to go to multiple years on Ron Marinaccio. 
I got a move here I'm interested in potentially. Royce Lewis is available. He can play all the spots. He's got speed, decent defender, and he's a good, well-rounded hitter. It's a pretty rare uh, situation to end up with a player of this caliber who you could consider just be like a, a platooning role player. But we have the money. And we wouldn't have to tie it up for a bunch of years. So, you know, if I just promise, hey, it's a platoon role. Maybe. Because that could be potentially like really good depth anywhere. I'm getting like a strange bug here where I'm trying to like edit a contract for a guy and it ends up like giving the contract to a different player. So I have to like double check my offers here. I got the Royce Lewis deal, Marinaccio, Reyes, Romano, and Hernandez. I think we're mostly good there. I'm going to up this deal I think on Hernandez, try to get him to come back. And there's still, you know, possibilities at $20 million worth of more offers out there. But a lot of these would be tough to do without, like, big multi-year commitments. And a lot of it, you know, sounds incredible, like Jordan Alvarez. But I'm looking at, you know, our core and the way we're coming together and everything. And suddenly throwing a $100 million wrench into the mix to a guy who's already 31 and starting to decline. It's not the way I'm trying to build this team. Ellie De La Cruz is available, but guess what? You might not want him, actually, because he has not been very good. It's also our last day to offer any arbitration, and because we have some money available now, I am going to be offering that to Andre Palante, which will tie up a little bit more of that money we had. And I'll probably offer it then to Samad Taylor as well, knowing that I'm probably just trying to pass him through waivers. And the reason why I'm offering this is because we have plenty of room available. And maybe there's a situation in the future where we end up needing to call him up at some point. But it's not a huge deal. Ron Marinaccio accepted the Royals offer. You gotta be kidding me. He just took like $2 million less. Jake McCarthy's going to the Yankees. Francisco Alvarez is going to the Yankees. Mets fans, can we get some thoughts, please? $31 million a year. We got Royce Lewis. Wow, he's not coming off a good year. But I'm not asking him to start or play early or anything. This is uh, basically replacing Samad Taylor's roster spot. And yeah, they're rubbing it in my face again. That sucks. I really want a Marinaccio. Partially because it's fun to say his name. Partially because he's a really good pitcher who would have helped us out a lot. And we just lost Jawan Duran. I need a win here. Oh, please, Soroka, go back to the Braves. Yes, this would be great. I don't want the Mariners to get him. Hopefully that goes our way. So there is Penn Murphy, who was excellent last year with the Mariners. And we suddenly have a need at closer. Romano's out there. He hasn't signed, though. I think we're going to have to offer here to Penn Murphy. Here come the A's with a big offer. 18.5 over two years. Also, it didn't want to give us the announcement, but Fran Mill Reyes is back. $7.1 million after playing for $4 million the year before. Our DH returns. Penn Murphy does sign with us. So this could be our solution for Joan Duran leaving. It is a two-year contract. Riley Green is going to Pittsburgh. We still had two more players, though, I wanted to add to this bullpen. And I don't know what they're waiting for. I might as well increase the offer a little bit, though, because it looks like we're going to have the space to do so. And uh, I, I need to win. Whoa, what is this? Aaron Judge has been traded to the Orioles. What is happening? Is this a salary dump? They got Jackson Frazier and two low-level minor leaguers. What is this? The Yankees just salary dumped Aaron Judge after a 34 home run season hitting 288. 
unless those like prospects even if they're good they're not that good because they can't play for years so they're not that good this is the part of the series where i need you to suspend your disbelief a little bit harman harrington is he the next aaron judge he's 57162 he's about a fourth the size of aaron judge and then michael merrifield he does have a potential they must really believe in him. I, I want to know what his potential is here. Let's see. We got uh, 90. So, what a move. Draft lottery. We were the 28th best team in the league, so this doesn't even matter for us. I don't care about the draft. We already rebuilt our team. But, here's the lottery anyway. Hey, shout out Colorado. Number one pick. Good for them. The Brewers did pretty good too, going up to four. But we're going to pick at 28. Michael Soroka signs with the Mariners. And there's one of your big storylines going into year seven. Uh, he was one of the first big moves in our rebuild. And now he's going to a rival team unbelievable all right so rule five draft i don't see us doing anything here I, I can't see there being room unless it's for a reliever this is a year where we need a reliever where's my pick when's my turn i don't know if i had a roster spot available well if the roster was full the roster was full and shout out to the Diamondbacks for drafting three players. I love that energy there. Trying to make things work. Was there a reliever we could have added? Esteban Casilla? I probably would have tried if he was the best guy. You know. Um, Reggie Crawford? Relief pitcher who could also play first base? Is he a two-way player? He's a two-way player. What? Not like a great two-way player. But he is. Just randomly there. That's cool. That's the first two-way player I've seen in the game, but I also don't look. I just found that on accident. Brett Beatty to the Red Sox. Sean Murphy to the Guardians. Vinny Pasquantino to the Rangers. Nate Pearson to the Mets. Grayson Rodriguez. A big old deal to the Cubs. And Jonathan Hernandez still sitting around, but a decision was made by Jordan Romano, and he chose us. All right. We have made some veteran additions to the bullpen. Jose Barrios is going to Los Angeles to be a Dodger. Mackenzie Gore going to the Red Sox. Kodai Senga gets a one-year deal with the Cubs. And now I have to cut somebody. It is going to be Denzel Clark. We try to pass him through waivers here. I had that one already kind of uh, lined up and whatnot. Samad Taylor still here. I might try to pass him through waivers as well. Oh, I can't yet until he accepts his arbitration deal. But that's just uh, a matter of time. And Jonathan Hernandez is back after making us wait in agony for days on end. So all in all, our budget now leaves us 30.46. Must be because of uh, the pending money, arbitration deals and whatnot. Nolan Gorman to the Braves. So they have found a way to spend some of that money. Really curious how good they end up being. Carlos Correa, four years, 126. That's a pretty good deal. He had 36 homers in 299 last year. Gunnar Henderson is going to the Diamondbacks. Not bad. And Corbin Carroll to the Rockies. He hasn't been playing all that great. His hitting stats aren't as good as they uh, would be in real life. So he gets a more discount deal to go to the Rockies where he would be awesome, by the way, in the Colorado outfield. Anthony Santander is going to the Cubs, who have been very active in free agency. And Jose Ramirez, that's a great move for Minnesota, considering the guy usually crushes them. So let's go to our arbitration hearings. I'm curious if we win these. 
And uh, Joe Michael won his arbitration hearing. But it's kind of... Uh, he kind of played himself there out of $84,000 because I offered him three and a half as a base salary. So that's a win. Then Landon Sims, they signed it with him for $1.6 million. Samad Taylor won his hearing for 2.5. Geloff won his for 2.5. Palante won his for 1.9. Gunnar Hoagland gets 1.6. Susak 2.9. And that leads us into spring training. All in all, we ended up spending all but about $13 million in our available budget, which gives us trade deadline wiggle room and the opportunity to make an addition if we need to. All in all, I think we weathered the storm the best that we could. We came back to upgrade the bullpen after losing out on Duran. And now if I need to frame this in a way to try and spin it positively, it's better to have two good players than one good player, right? You know, Duran had a very distinct role, late game closer. That's fine. But now we have a player who has played at his level last year in Penn Murphy when he saved 54 ball games with a 1.4 ERA. For the Duran money, we were able to bring in Murphy and Jordan Romano, who also has closing experience, who's been very good the last two years. And ultimately, you'd need numbers in the bullpen. You know, Duran's good to come in for 15, 20 pitches. But now we go and get, you know, two relievers who could go back to back. Give us a little more depth in there in the... Uh, in the bullpen so as we set the stage here for spring training i think the first thing i want to see is is this starting rotation going to be fine with phillips and not hughes but cam cope you know we have money if we got to go make a move but i'd like to hopefully have this be our rotation and i'm sure that it doesn't instill a ton of confidence right now i mean you got the cy young award winning joe michael I think Gilbert can be better than last year. You know, last year was his worst in a, a while, so hopefully it bounces back in the other direction. While the Chuck is solid, we don't know enough about Cole Phillips yet. He only has 83 career innings, but uh, he's somebody I'm hopeful for. And then Cam Cope. I haven't given him enough attention because of how close he's been. We haven't watched like a bunch of his minor league starts or anything. He's always been there, but just kind of left aside to develop. While we focused on higher upside players and other top prospects. But Cam Cope was like second pick of the entire series. This guy's a legit option. He was our competitive balance A pick back in year one. We picked him when he was 18 years old. When he was drafted... He was a 67, and now he's a 79. He was also drafted with 80 potential. I'm curious if that's gone up at all. It has not. Elliot Hughes was the third pick in this series. Hughes is a 70 when he was drafted as a 58. Hughes does have higher potential, but he's 27. So the chances of him getting there are uh, very low. He has 91 potential. You also have Alfonso Montes, who is a 79 overall. And he has made his debut before. But he pitched mostly as a reliever. So hasn't been tested in this starting capacity yet. You got Henry Vasquez, who could also get an opportunity Eddie Enriquez. But it sure would be nice if we can fill this the way we plan to. And there's still Gunnar Hoagland. After all this time, he's still there. I just, I don't really trust him. So if I was then to lay out what our bullpen looks like, I think it gives you Ashby, Haynes, Griggs, Hernandez, Palante, Uribe, Murphy, and Romano. Those are my main focuses there. It's a pretty good list of guys, I think. And players like Uribe could easily take a huge leap this season. 
but we added some veterans while losing a big one for sure. It's not going to be easy, but I don't think that this bullpen looks bad at all. We did not make many changes here to the core of our lineup though. And that was never the plan. You know, thankfully this team was in a position to honestly run the offense back. We didn't lose anybody. We actually added somebody in Royce Lewis, and it's a luxury that he doesn't even have to start. He can play whatever role we need, and it doesn't matter. It's a one-year contract. He's a premium utility bench player. Thankfully, we could still afford it. But in the event that somebody else gets hurt, this move keeps us from having to panic into trading away prospects. Now, that's if he can come back and play better than he did in 2028. He only hit 204 last season. You know, that was his lowest in a long time. So I'm expecting he'll be probably a more effective player this coming season. But it's a move that honestly doesn't even have to work. We have a really good bench now. Royce Lewis. You got Max Muncy. Miguel Cabrera. We still got to get some playing time in there, of course, for Yusniel Cruz. And the plan is going to be to start him in left field and let him grow as an all-around player throughout the year. But more or less, the offense, we're running back. It's the pitching now that's going to be seeing changes in the starting rotation. No Soroka, no Duran. And we'll find out how well I've fixed those two spots. What do you think of the offseason, everybody? Do you think this puts us in a position to run it back this year and make another run at the postseason? Now, my plan in year seven, obviously, I want to move quicker than we did in year six because so much of this series, the entire thing basically, has just been, all right, we're rebuilding the team. So, you know, in the bad years, once we got past the trade deadline, we summed up, you know, the, those last couple months like nothing. But now that we've actually rebuilt the team, I feel like we can afford to move a little bit quicker, especially if the team remains playing at the same level. Primarily, I slow things down in this series when the team state changes. When you go from rebuilding to contending, and now those games actually mean something. Or if you go from contending to rebuilding and suddenly you got to go take a look at some other players and there's other storylines that slow it down. If it's more of the same, that's when we just start simming weeks at a time and move on with our day. Especially with a team here that hasn't changed a whole lot. So, spring training is going to be next. We're going to take a look at all the new guys. We're going to see Phillips, Cope, the bullpen arms. You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a lot of hitting in the spring training because I don't need to. I want to get us one good episode to see those pitchers get ready for the regular season and then get on to year seven and let's move quickly and let's see if we can get back to make another run. Last thing here I want to close with, top prospects. They still have Yusniel Cruz here as the number one, but he'll come off this list very shortly. Marco De Silva, the third baseman, 67 overall. Cedric Johnson. So he was... Uh, What's he doing there at 17, though? I think it's because he has really high potential. I'm going to pull up my uh, spreadsheet here and refresh my memory. But Cedric Johnson has uh, 90 potential. He was a fourth-round pick. Not bad. I'd be shocked if we ever saw him do anything in the series, though, just because of the timeline. Edgar Gonzalez, 68 overall. I don't know if this is the year, considering how many lefties we have. It'd be tough for him to develop enough to break through... And then Jackie Sechrist, another reliever who we should see in spring training have a shot to make the opening day roster. More likely, though, he starts off at AAA. Are there any other players we should think about? I mean, the 40 man's already set, so I'm not really in a position to call anybody else up unless I wave somebody off the 40 man. But I don't know that there's anybody here I'm wanting to wave. Maybe Samad Taylor. Remove from 40 man. I could call up like one guy if I need to. I think the one guy I'd be interested in is like Doug Romero, but there's already so many relievers. At the double A level, Manny Reyes is probably our top prospect. 
and he's someone who could contribute offensively you know fairly soon but there's no reason to rush him along we have a deep developed offense right now he'd struggle for playing time so he needs to go to triple a or stay at double a and just hit and get reps at first base although i think he's probably a future dh and maybe there's going to be an eventual transition from Fran Mil Reyes to Manny Reyes at that DH role. What did you think of the offseason, everybody? Let me know down below. I hope you are excited for the future of this series. I know I am. I want to get on to year seven, get some good momentum and continue. I had so much fun doing those playoff games, man. Like that is what I do content for, getting to play intense games like that. And it was very, very refreshing, but obviously leaves me wanting to get back to finish the job. And that's what we're trying to do here in year seven. Leave your thoughts down below as we prepare for a new season. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the spring training episode. Have a great day.